Si wewe si you don't know. Welcome back, guys. I, I love seeing you guys. Come on, I really love seeing you. So don't ask me why I'm this happy. It's because I know I'm making a video just for you. Boom, so watch it, guys. So on my Instagram, I asked for your opinion if I should actually do a story time on this particular video that I found. This video is actually very important to me. That's why I asked you, my Instagram viewers, your opinion, should I do a story time? Should I not do a story time? The votes are in and I have to give the people what they want. So I decided to do a longer video for YouTube and make a shorter one for Instagram, of course. So today I'll be doing a story time on the day I broke, no, not broke, the day I destroyed, no, no, not destroyed, the day I almost ruptured my back trying to wind a one hour later. <gasps> Thick girl at Miami Carnival 2018. Let's get it. Join the tribe. Subscribe. Before I get into the spicy story time, I have to pick up the sponsors for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Fet JA, the biggest, baddest soccer group in Jamaica. The crew with the most fire, with the most energy, crew with the most vibes. They're like the energy section of every party, every Fet. But I mean, they don't attend Fets. <laughs> They are the fit. So to do this video, they actually gave me a pretty cool shirt and like a really cool face mask, guys. Like it's so comfortable and everything. The logo and everything right there, you see it? Yeah, they actually gave me these really cool merch because like I'm so close to like the founder. Like he's a pretty cool guy, guys, honestly. Like it's this guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a pretty cool guy, right? So anyways, let's get right into the story time, right? All right, guys, check it. Now, at this point, we, I can't start the whole story time from the end. This is where I knew I almost died, right? So I gotta take you back all the way to the beginning, all right? Let's go. October 2018, me and my boy Keems, we went to Miami Carnival. I'm in Miami, bro. This story is actually about Juve morning. So I woke up, I washed my face, I was ready. I was so excited for my first Juve in Miami that I actually skipped breakfast. So we skipped breakfast and we left. Yeah, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm on pump. Watch him. Watch him. So I can't fool the belly, you Can't fool the belly. We were just ready. We were there before everybody, before the sun came up. Like, what? If you know me in a fet, I never have a shirt on. I might enter the fet with a shirt, but I never leave with a shirt on. I, I'm not good with shirts. So, Fet JA, if you do not see this shirt, come back to Jamaica. It means that I went to a fet and I lost it. I am sorry. I decided I'm gonna start the morning without a shirt to get my vibes going, right? I'm a shirt, brother. I'm a fet in a dog. But my boy Keems thought otherwise. Sir, hey, sir hey, excuse hey. me, sir. It, it's kind of too early still, and I just wait, wait till the fet starts. Put on this, please. Because he was like, okay, Wes, don't be so excited in the beginning because you don't know what you're gonna get into. You don't know what's gonna happen on the road, so get your shirt on first and then take it off afterwards. I listened to him. Yeah, I, I did, I did. So I put my shirt on and we're chilling for a little bit till the sun actually came up and people started coming in in numbers, in hundreds, guys. I'm telling you, like, there are so many people. Like, I was just watching so many squares of people just walking in. It was crazy. So I decided I was gonna stretch before I actually went on the road. Because, I mean, I know there are gonna be different body sizes of women on the road, but I didn't know what to expect. So I was just messing around and goofing around and doing some minor stretches, not the actual thing. This is a tick, yeah. Mm-hmm. Spread. Why? Uh -huh. That's good. Yeah. Tiny guy. Fast <laughs> forward throughout the day. I've been doing a lot of interviews with people, you know, talking to a lot of folks. How's Juve? How much do you love Soka? All of that. If you want to watch all that, that full video, I'm gonna put a card up here. Now, here's the chain reaction of where things just went south for my back. So the chain started right here. I was so pumped up, I was fetting all day. Sun a beat, rain start fall, everything was just happening at the same time. Paint was being thrown, powder being thrown, everything was just amazing. On the way, chipping down the road, 
I ran into ZJ Sparks and I was supposed to do an interview on the road with ZJ Sparks and the Zip 103 team. While we were there trying to set up the audio and everything so that we can get connected to radio back home in Jamaica and record everything and be awesome, this girl right here decided to be doing all sorts of whining and thing. And I mean, it's like she was calling me, like she was saying, Sir, what are you doing over there with your lovely chocolate looking body? Please take yourself from there and come over here behind me and jam on my waist. So, what did you expect me to do? I decided to go over there. On a scale of 1 to 10, her whining skills were like a little bit over 4. Because at one point, she was just throwing it back. Like, I mean, girl, whine please. Like, may I try to keep up with your whine, but I just throw you to it back. So, I was there and I was trying to keep up with her. Ladies, understand this. If your whine is not on point, the man trying to keep up behind you can hurt himself because he'll be trying to keep up with a whine that is non-existent and then his waistline is going to be like, what are you doing? His spine will be like, I'm not sure what's going on right here and then they're not coinciding and then something gets ruptured and you don't, you, you, you don't want it happening, right? So at this point, I started feeling back pains because I'm like, okay, she's short. First of all, I had to be bending my knees really low and the thing is I had to like spread my legs out. Whoa, bun up. No, 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 the kid is not a bad doctor. I had to separate my legs so that I can actually bun up doctor. get lower so I can whine her and she wasn't even whining properly. So I whined her for a little bit and then I went back to my interview. Soka is just phenomenal and I expected greatness but this is beyond greatness. All right, I'm not playing all of that interview. If you want to actually watch it, Go watch the video on my channel, all right? It's actually there, the full thing. Anyways, now let's go downhill. Boom, so while I was chipping down the road, my eyes catch two girls, right? So why my eyes catch those two girls? They were wearing colorful wigs, but that wasn't the main reason why I decided to approach them. It, it, it was the fact that th they were thick. After catching up to them, I realized that it wasn't just two. There was a third one, but she did kind of skinny still. He needs some milk. Psych! Girl, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. But anyways, I decided I was going to give her a wine. And she received it. <laughs> but here's the problem. At the time, there were two trucks playing music at the same time. One truck was playing dance hall, and the other truck was playing soccer. I was whining to the soccer, and she was whining to the dance hall. So the, the, the two was not mixing together. So my rhythm was not her rhythm. But for some reason, it, it, it worked. But at one point, my back was saying, Wes, something's wrong. Very wrong. Pick a song, dog. Pick a song. One song. Two on one tweet. But guess who decided to ignore his back and just went along with whatever program was going on. Me. And I decided to just whine and felt accomplished. So at that time, I said to Keems, you know what, I'm going to lay off the whining for a little bit. I'm just going to just chill, chip down the road, enjoy some soca by myself. I don't need to whine anybody, right? So I was chipping, I was chipping, I was chipping, and chipping some more. And all of a sudden, I ended up behind a truck. And this truck had a particular soca artist on top of it. This soccer artist was Ricardo Drew. Now, this man was on top of the truck causing problems. He said to what? When I stop running like you're going to eat this morning. This man caused half the crowd to break a branch. This man threw water bottles in the crowd. <laughs> Planning to just chill, chill and chip peacefully. But no, he had to bring all his energy on the truck and give it to the whole crowd. Now, that was amazing. Now, at this point, everybody was just hyped up because, I mean, he's Ricardo Drew, Mr. Professional Drinker himself, Mr. Stamp Your Name, Mr. Homesick, right? He decided to throw water bottles in the crowd because we were about to get crazy. Now tell me something, with all that vibes and all that energy, did you expect me to leave any girl bumper unwind? Come on now, get a hold of yourself now. You have the audacity to think that I would do such a thing. I shall never leave any bumper unwind. Any
Anyways, before I started wearing bumpers, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna take a picture with one of the greatest soca artists alive. So now we're getting closer to the part where I almost ruptured my back, right? Yeah. So I started chipping down the road again. I passed Drew's truck and I went to the truck in front of it. And I'm there chipping and enjoying myself and dancing and singing. And then I saw a piece of bumper. Mm. When that DJ decided he was going to play King Bubba FM bubbling. I never know what was going to happen, you know. But when I see she bent over, I was was not going to let any other man come wine her. Not upon that tune. Because I said to myself, that bumper needed saving. That bumper was drowning and needed me to save it. So I decided that I was going to, um, <clears throat> you know, take care of it. <laughs> So, <laughs> because I felt like I have accomplished something, I have found the bumper that I have been wanting to wine two hours back, and I finally found it, and I finally get a wine from a worthy opponent. I felt like I felt I felt like I was on cloud nine. You know, I felt good. I felt like I could I, I, I could handle anything, anybody, any size, anywhere. And so I did. Now when I started chipping, and I saw this woman, mm, actually she saw me, and she gave me the look. If you know anything about fetting or being on the road, whenever a girl look upon you, and she sees that she want gear her wine, she go arch her back, look behind her, spot you for like a millisecond, and if you decide to, you not going to take that call, somebody else going to take it. I saw the call, and I answered it. I decided to take on this. Thick girl, all by myself. I walk up behind her and I ready. Right, song I play to you know. Face down, ass up. And I went into the starting position and I was ready. Brace herself on the stop sign and this girl was ready. Now, let's freeze this video. First of all, you see all that garbage right there? In my mind, I'm like, Wes, come on, have some class. Why are you going to wind her right in front of the garbage heap? And then I thought to myself, I never knew you wanted to wind. But she called me. And she decided to check a bend over in front of the garbage. Friend, if you're going to bend over in front of the trash, don't give me no trash wine. May I beg you, please make sure that it's worth it. That's what was going through my mind. The next thing that was going through my mind was, Wes, are your feet in the right position to handle this wine? My legs were somewhere. And I don't know if it was in the right position or not, but I kept fixing my legs because I, I, I could not fall. The worst thing that could ever happen to you when you're wearing a thick girl is you falling from wearing a thick girl. My boss, your back up a strong. You have to be solid as a rock when it comes to wearing a thick girl. My legs were planted, but then my arm placement was completely wrong. If you know me, when I'm wearing in a fit, my arms have to be literally over each other to make sure that I am balanced, my arms are balanced, and I'm doing the T-Rex position. Right cheek goes here, left cheek goes here, my waist goes there, my other waist goes here. However, only one hand was free, so you know that my whole body calibration was off. I never want to shame myself. There were scores of people watching and looking to see if this man is going to destroy that bumper. I'm not lie still, my back did start hurt me. I'm gonna to make her take a breather, shake it out a little bit, and give Keems everything in my hand. I know who would tell me for tech hype. Who would tell me for tech hype and decide to give Keems my things then to make it look like say yo, yeah man, I'm ready for deal with something now, you know. So now everybody start look for me. Everybody around me starts say yeah man, I'm bored for deal with this year now. Me a fret. My back starts seize up. My legs them start contract, but I could not give up. I give it up. If I gave up, she would have given me a stink face. She probably would have taken up a bottle from the garbage heap and threw it in the back of my head because I did not wind her properly. I decided that I was not going to give up. I was not going to let this bumper embarrass me. I was going to give it every piece of iron in my back. She did not get it today. I want to see you. It was at this moment that he knew.
he fucked up. Yo, Fiesta! I decided to give her the walk of the century. And then, the DJ decided to pull up the song. God himself, see, and no say, me did a good dead. Because him see when the girl start charge up. Me say, yo, let me replay. Look at this. She start charge up, you know. So you know she gonna give me some piece of wine there, you know. When me know she nigga drop and probably roll under one of them chuck wheel there. My back was not ready. I did not stretch for this. But I decided to pretend as if, oh, oh my God. Look what the DJ did. He decided to pull up the song. Darn it. No, we can't actually finish our wine. If it wasn't for that DJ, I would have torn up your bumper at the quickest I walk out of that place. Awesome. I didn't even walk on the road again. I decided to take a break and go on the lawn. What? Let me go on the I just played it off and called Keems with me because I never want Keem to stop the recording and then she probably think that I'm gonna come back. You know, said the whole time he was there laughing at me because he knew that my back was hurting. He knew, you know, but no, him just said, Take it time, General. How you named hero? But I disappeared because I could not do it. All right, so guys, that's the end of the story. The point of the whole story is stretch first. No matter if it's a regular fit, if it's a juve, if it's carnival day, whatever it is, I learned the hard way. And I actually had to stretch my back out on the lawns after the whole video and relax for maybe like 30 minutes before I actually left that place and went back to the hotel room. Boom! So that was story time with Wes on the day I almost ruptured my back. If you loved that story, hit the like button and do what every single YouTuber tells you to do. Subscribe. <laughs> it's really not that hard guys and clicking that subscribe button is actually free you don't pay anything it's not like only fans i'm just saying i will see you on the road <laughs> psych covid19 still exists so i'll see you in the next video i don't time then yeah man i don't time then i don't time then hit the boy yes and we out boom join the tribe subscribe Let's go.